A couple weeks ago on the podcast, I was wearing a silly hat and Bob and Dave were talking about it. This is the hat. I've been living on Avenue B for like 25 years. I like this hat. That's Todd Taylor on the banjo and Mike Moody on the bass. More about them later in the vlog. A few projects this week I started. This is my high school intern, Ben. He's working on getting the electronics engineered. I'm going to work on the physical. He's working on the electronics. I have a silly idea. We'll see where it goes. Electric skateboard idea. And it's just a, a skateboard. It's not really a skateboard. See where it goes. When I picked up the power hammer, Fletcher gave me this two-ton hoist. It went up, but the chain didn't go down. And I couldn't figure out why. I knew something was locked. I took the whole thing apart. I couldn't figure out exactly what was locked and I referred to a different version of the same exact configuration. I referred to one that I have that only picks up one ton. I took it apart and I figured out that this gear is supposed to be free. It was so rusted and welded in place, I didn't realize that they were two separate parts. Took it out. I had to heat it up to get them apart. I got them apart. I'm gonna put it back together this week and that should help in getting the power hammer off of the trailer. My new video this week on the Core 77 channel, published Wednesday afternoon, is this leather bag. This is a copy of an old tool bag that I saw in an antique shop. I always say shop with your eyes, not with your money. I finished my welding table this week. It's three by six with the leaves. Thank you very much to my friends at weldtables.com. There's a video assembling this coming up very soon. Look out for Taylor's third video this week. She's making a camping chair made with leather and walnut legs. <laughs> A lot of people told me this week that I got to put face recognition on, and it is on. There is some sort of thing. It says faces or something. In the, I don't know. That whole first segment is probably out of focus. I'm not I'm looking here. I should be wearing my Casey Neistat glasses so I could make sure that I'm in focus the whole time. Everybody should always carry a repair kit. Quads, you got a slow leak in it. We just found it. We're going to repair it. You buy these at the automotive store and you keep them in your truck. I fixed two flats on this already with this thing. Once you find your hole, you got to make the hole bigger. Right there. There's our hole. This has a split in the middle, so when you push it in, it does that, and then when you pull it out, it comes out. Watch. Fixed. This should stay, this little mush in. And that'll stay there, that's it. <laughs> service was taken over by the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard served as a buoy tender. It was purchased uh, by what's now the uh, Lilac Preservation uh, Project. And you can come visit this boat, right? It's open oh, all the yeah. time. We're in the shadow of the World Trade Center, which is right outside. We've got a great view of the harbor, uh, various exhibits. We have art exhibits. We have a uh, historic exhibit going on now. 
And frankly, we're looking uh, for volunteers. I mean, this is in many senses the largest uh, maker project in the city of New York. And this is also the only steamship. And we're in the process of restoring the ship, the intention being to have her fully operational under steam. Well, wow. a few weeks ago I did a segment on the boat, the Letty G. Howard, that was up here in the Upper Hudson. My buddy Barry worked on that boat, and Barry is now volunteering on this boat, the Lilac. This is his buddy Jeff, he's working with him on this with a couple of other volunteers. They've been working on this project for at least five years. And it takes a long time to fix a big giant boat like this. Mary is the director of the non-for-profit. Is this your boat? Um, I'm the director of the nonprofit that owns it. She just turned 84. She was launched on May 26, 1933. The time the engines ran was 1972. The Coast Guard decommissioned the ship then um, in February of that year and took it down to their shipyard in Curtis Bay, Maryland. Sure. We're open from May to October, three afternoons a week, Thursdays uh, 4 to 7, Saturdays and Sundays 2 to 7, and also for special events from time to time. Oh, very cool. Volunteers allowed? Oh, yeah, we need volunteers. Come right, on down. Right on. Okay, you're going to know how to use a grinder and a scraper. Yeah, I need office people too. Oh, um, good. Events people, everything. Very cool. All right, well, thank you for your time. These guys are looking for volunteers, they're looking for money, they're looking for staff. So if anybody's interested in working on Lilac, check a link in the description below or contact me. I'll get you in touch with Barry or Mary. Never forget. <laughs> Update on the shop move, everything is moving along swiftly. I have four more weeks to get out of there. In between, I still have to fit in a trip to Oklahoma. Driving, hmm, I think I could figure that out. Thank you this week to Derek from Malden and John from Malden. That's a town near Boston. Those guys happen to be in New York and Derek actually let me use his truck. We loaded his truck, my truck. We drove up to the new shop and offloaded Derek. Thank you for your time, Johnny. Thank you for your time. Key to moving heavy things is just move it a little bit at a time. This is a walker turner drill press I've had since I was a little kid. I have no idea where it came from. It's been in my life since I was a little tiny kid. My dad got it somewhere. This is my third time here in Brooklyn. I made so many friends on the internet. I talk about this all the time. Todd Taylor is somebody I've been corresponding with for the last five years. He's been watching my TV shows. He's been watching my YouTube channel. We finally got a chance to meet in person. It was like meeting an old friend after talking all this time. Todd, you hold the record yep. playing the fastest beats per minute? Yeah, I was the first person in history to ever set the record. The record was retired. There's been a lot of people that tried to break it, but they couldn't do it because they had to do it the way I played it. But anyway, they retired the record, so it's in forever. That's it. Nobody can beat you. And the reason I set that record is for all the handicapped people in the world to know you know I suffer from muscular dystrophy when I was in a wheelchair and like to die and I set that world record for all the handicapped people do not don't ever give up keep going and going and going you can beat it because I did and I'm still beating it today good for you yeah that's great when I was a kid my dad used to volunteer me and my brothers and we would all work at the muscular dystrophy Carnival. Oh when yeah, I was a kid. yeah. You know, we did it for like five years in a row. Oh yeah, it was you like know, a little local event to exactly. raise money. Exactly. Because I and I used to work with Jerry Lewis and Celine Dion every year from Vegas and from CBS doing the telethon. No kidding. <laughs> 
played for everybody. Yes, played all, for everybody. And, uh, you know, lived in Nashville for many years too. And and a lot of people know me from, you know, pioneer of rock and roll banjo. And in the 80s, uh, I did a remake of Freebird and took the banjo to the top 40 as a solo instrument. The first person in history to do that. The good Lord's been good to me. So good that was that was the thing that, you know, everybody talks about the Guinness thing, but a lot of people don't realize that, you know, about that, you know, that was like history making and the original guys, some from Skinner played on it. And it, to me, to this day, I was 17 or 18 when that happened. Wow. Let me ask you a simple question. Of all the artists around the world that you've met, who is the one that's the most inspirational to you? The, from your artistry. Okay, from my artistry, the, I've worked with a lot of people, met them all through the years. My favorite is the Oak Ridge Boys. I've been on shows with them. Yeah. Those guys are just like you are. They're, they're down to earth, they're good guys. I love the Oak Ridge Boys. Matter of fact, I'm wearing an Oak Ridge Boys hat. <laughs> Now in your field it's Jimmy Darista. Oh right, on, thank you. and I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I, cause <laughs> I like to make stuff too, folks. And I've always watched Jimmy's videos, and I, I do it, but I have to watch my hands, you know. Right. But, That's your livelihood. And so I, so I can watch him make it, and it'll it's help my craving for not doing stuff. You let know? me cut my hand off. Yeah, well, I don't want you to cut your. And then, you know, Jimmy, you told me, me you used to play the banjo too. I was practicing the banjo until I had my my table saw injury. And that kind of put me out of commission with everything, guitar, banjo, everything, Man. for so long that I just never got back on track. Wow. Kind of blew me up. But I love listening to you because I'll never be as good as you. So. Oh, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for the yes, love sir, and support, brother. my friend. Thank you, Jimmy brother. Darista, folks. <laughs> Todd Taylor. Yeah, peace out. <laughs> After hanging out with Todd, we came up with a few projects we're going to try and work on together, so look forward to seeing more and hearing more of Todd Taylor. Todd, thank you, brother. And now 30 seconds of me petting Spike, of course, to Todd Taylor. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Spike. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>